Hi and welcome to section 3 basic statistics in R. What we'll learn in this video is we'll understand some of the basic statistical concepts and apply it to financial data and see how we can perform these calculations in R very easily. In the first video we'll take a look at how we can summarize financial data using the tidy quant package in R. In the second video we'll take a look at outlier analysis in R using box plots and other measures. We'll take a look at asset returns in the third video. In the fourth video, we'll take a look at uh, what is a population, what is a sample, uh, central limit theorem, etc. In the fifth video, we'll take a look at probability distribution of financial data, specifically normal distribution and log normal distributions. In the sixth video, we'll take a look at volatility, correlation and covariance in R. We'll also look at how we can calculate these measures for portfolio. And finally, we'll take a look at skewness and kurtosis in R uh, and we'll see how we can test for normality of our data sets. Hi and welcome to the video on summarizing financial data in R. In this video, we'll look at exploratory data analysis, descriptive statistics, study the concept of variance and standard deviation and use the dplyr package to summarize the data in a meaningful way. So let's get started. One of the first steps after collecting data is to perform the exploratory data analysis. This gives us a general idea about the underlying data and the relationships between different variables in our data sets. We can make use of two handy tools to summarize our data. The first one is the data visualization techniques and second one is the summary statistics. Data visualization provides us with a tool to analyze large data sets. Some of the benefits of data visualization are it helps in identifying relationships, observe trends, summarize large data in a meaningful way, and it is a great tool to deliver and present data to others. In the prior videos, we used line charts and histogram. In this video, we'll make use of scatter plots to establish relationships. Scatter plots assist in visualizing relationships between two variables. In fact, it is a very handy tool for a quick analysis. In this video, we'll generate a scatter plot to study the relationship between Amazon stock and the Dow Jones index. So let's go to our R studio, perform these analysis. So we first load our necessary libraries and we get our uh, prices for Amazon, the Dow Jones index. We also filter the data so that we have the data for seven years. We remove the NA because the FRED data uh, for Dow Jones comes with NA values in it. So we need to clean it. And we also load some Google data for some analysis for later use. So let's quickly run this. And it will take some time. Okay, so we have our data sets on the right hand corner. Next, we will generate the scatter plot using the plot function. Note the first argument is the variable for the x axis, the second is for the y axis, and the PCH19 will plot a scatter plot with points that are filled. Um, and so you don't have to pass any argument of specifying the scatter plot. It's the default. It will R will plot a scatter plot for you. So let's run this. So what do we see? We see that we see a strong relationship in the beginning uh, in the beginning of 2010, and then it sort of flattens out, and then we have a stronger, a little bit stronger relationship towards the end in the 2016-2017 period. We can also plot. Two plots at, on the same screen to to compare uh, to and perform data analysis on two separate stocks. For this, we'll make use of the par function, and we we first plot the Amazon stock as we have it here, and then we next in the subsequent screen we will plot the Google stock with the Dow Jones index, and we can see the relationship. So let's widen the screen, and it will help help us understand this better. Um, so we see the same relationship and with the Google we also see similar relationships. We can also plot many other plots uh, uh, subsequently using the same par MF row argument. Um, <clears throat> for the so now moving forward, we'll look at the second tool which is the summary statistics. What is summary statistics? It lays basically it is something that it will help us in laying the foundation for our exploratory data analysis. The summary function uh, that we will use will provide us with some basic information such as the minimum, the first quartile, median, mean, the third quartile and the maximum value. 
for categorical variable it only displays the count uh, we can also make use of the r quantile function to get various quantiles so let's move step by step so first we will create our portfolio of stocks and we'll get the prices for it using the tq get function and we'll only filter out to have industry which has technology in it the technology sector industries so let's quickly run this and so now the tech variable has all the companies with the technology stock we can quickly see the summary statistics on it and it you will see that it will basically have the opening the close the low high but for each column you will have the min the first the median the mean the third and the max maximum value uh, we can also calculate the quartiles using the quantile function the first argument is the vector here we are going to use the closing prices the next argument is the probability which we, where, where we have to specify the percentiles that we want to generate the data for so here we are specifying we want the fifth percentile the 10th the 25th the 50th which is the median 75th which is the third quartile so on and so forth so let's run this and so we can look at the quantiles right we can also calculate the interquartile range which is the third quartile minus the second quartile and we will have the iqr and if you, you can quickly do this calculation right here but r gives you this handy function we can also calculate the variance of the stock using the var function in r and we can also calculate so the r variance is around 12,016 and then we also calculate the standard deviation which we in finance we call it the vo volatility of the stock right so this is calculating the volatility of the technologies stock using the closing prices uh, finally we can also make use of the group and the summarize function so let's look at what the group by argument does is it will take all the stocks in our portfolio and assemble them using the symbol argument or the stocks argument and so once we create this group variable we can use it within the summarize function and generate various statistics for our portfolio so for we know that we have four stocks amazon bac eeq and ibc and then we create the mean the number of observation the min the max and the volatility so note that the group by argument and the summarize argument are both from the dplyr package and they are not from the base r package so in summary what we learned in this video is use the summary function the quantile function the interquantile range the variance standard deviation and finally how we can create the same by providing arguments within the group by and the summarize function